Bean. And I'm Glenny D. Thanks for joining in on Five for Design, where you get to practice your design skills for STEM in five, five minutes, minutes a day. day. It's been great to see so many students involved in the activities last week. To kick things off, let's ask Miss B what designing she's been doing behind the scenes this week. Oh, thanks, Glenny D. Well, I did really enjoy my classes last week with Mrs. Lewis, Ms. Raz, and Mrs. Nagel. Your classes were amazing, and so I had a lot of fun meeting your students and working with them. I also managed time to draw some jewelry designs. Ooh. Yeah, that was for a year nine class in Sydney that are working with Paula McClay to design some cool right. earrings. So that was so much fun. What I loved was that they um, were learning about how to draw their designs inside boxes. And I didn't realize that a lot of students don't know about something called crating. Do you crate? I, I use crating. Yeah. yeah. I sketch light boxes and, and stack them and create my designs inside, sure. So it's a really awesome technique that we thought we'd focus on today. Uh, do you think they're ready? I think they're ready. I've seen their lines, they're confident, the circles. We're good to go. Okay, fantastic. And then maybe if we have time, Glenny D can show you his rocket launcher. I think you use crating to design that. I did. Let's have a look at some of that. <laughs> no, the activities first. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Let's get started. Welcome to week three exercises. This week we're drawing light lines and we're drawing crates. Crating is a method where I draw squares and rectangles to help me set out the basics of the overall of the drawing. Even if it's circles that you're drawing, they're um, really easily drawn inside boxes. I'm giving a sketch here uh, sped up and it is an extension drawing that's available later in the week um, but I wanted to show you how so many of the objects here start off as little crates. This is the Mars Perseverance which touched down this week on Mars where we could discover signs of life. Hey, all those Minecraft players will recognize this. When you have more skill and uh, knowledge, you can add things into your inventory. And it's the same with drawing and designing. You need to learn some little tips. And here's one. When drawing a line in this direction, I can't see where I'm headed to. It's hidden behind my hand. So what you do is stretch the pencil out and have it laying down like this. Here's how your hand should look. And for drawing downwards, I'm swinging the pencil out again. That's much like you'd hold a pencil when you're writing your name. Don't forget to run your hand or your fingers lightly on the paper. You should be in contact with the paper all the time. Use your whole arm for long lines. But when I'm drawing these short lines, of course I'm using the wrist. It's much easier for little short lines. Cool. Here's an exercise to warm up your hand. I call it the Highlander. Here's a few things to avoid. Try not to go further than that line. Try to avoid flicking your lines or drawing too quick or going outside the box or drawing using your wrist, which means you draw so slowly that your lines are all wobbly. Okay, you ready to start? We're going to warm up first by tracing along these dotted lines. So I'm starting there and ending there and then run your pen across the page. You should take about one second per line. 1,000. Let's try on the second one. Let's do five more lines. 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. If it takes you longer than that, you really need to push yourself. Don't worry so much about accuracy. Well done. All right, it's up to you. So we're going to start and finish on the dots. And are you ready? Again, ready, 1,000, back to a dot, 2,000, again, 3,000, 4,000. Excellent if, you, if you're keeping up. You really have to force yourself to draw fast. You'll become more accurate with practice. While drawing these vertical lines, we're going to leave our page just as it is. We're going to not rotate your page. So warm up on those dotted lines and let's see how we go. Keep drawing all the way down the page and don't stop halfway. Remember, love your lines. Be proud of every line you draw and never cover them up. 
Here's a chance for some more practice. You'll notice there's no box drawn for you this time, so you'll have to try and line up to the dots. Start off with the horizontal lines, and then work your way down. When you finish drawing your vertical lines, we're going to go back and draw really light, thin lines in between each of those horizontal and vertical lines. As a once only, feel free to add some stripes of colour in different widths and design your own tartan, which as we know, is used to make Scottish kilts. I wonder if we were designing this for some Scottish relatives, what meaning the colours could have. Um, perhaps the blue is the big bodies of water and streams, the golden fleeces from the sheep, and um, the green rolling hills, and the red stripes are a reminder of how red their skin gets if they forget to put on their lotion. Hey, it's day two, five for design, very excited. Today we begin drawing crates. First, let me show you something familiar to you, the noughts and crosses. You can see a box has been drawn in the center, but importantly, our guidelines are always sketched longer than we need them. Let's draw a tissue box to begin. So with one line across, place a mark, and a second line, make sure they're long, and then cross one over. It needs to look longer than a square to be a tissue box, so I think around about there. Next we draw an opening on the inside. Try to make your lines really light and thin. Here's why. If I draw dark straight up, it means that when I add something else to the drawing, like a tissue coming out of the opening, let's sketch one of those in, it means that I have to come back and use my uh, eraser to make the drawing clear. Leave those light guidelines in, because remember they're light. Guidelines look great on sketches, so leave them in. Here's another object. See if you can guess what it is. We start with a tissue box, thin line just inside, line across the middle, circle with two lines. We're looking at the top of something. I'm sure this will give it away. You're right, it's a pencil sharpener. Well done. Sketch a new rectangle or a crate and we're going to add a name tag to it. It's a pencil case with scissors, ruler, a Rubik's cube, a bay blade, a post-it note and anything else you'd like to add. When you've finished, add a dark line right around the outside of the object that you've been drawing. This is called a cutting line and it helps our drawing stand out from all our lovely guidelines. Alright, new drawing, I'm sketching a tissue box with lines inside and two down the middle. It is a view from inside the room, looking out, maybe a starry night. I can draw a toaster simply by adding a curved line and toast on the top. Last object, anywhere on your page, sketch another rectangle. Let's turn this one into a table. Let's thicken up the top, that's the table top. And for the legs, we're using the line that's there and drawing another one beside it. To make it more convincing, we add something on top. Excellent work. Hey, welcome back, day three. Some more crating, let's get started. We're drawing a crate this time, or a rectangle that's sitting in the tall direction. Over the outline, we draw a shape like this and round the top. On the bottom, we draw a letter H. A backpack, you've got it, it's among us. Sketch another tissue box, remember it's in the tall direction. Add one line across the middle, some handles, and we have a refrigerator. For this crate, I'm making it taller than a tissue box, and I'm extending some aiming marks out the side, a curve on top, and it is a slushy yum. Can you guess what this next object is? It's starting with the tissue box shape. The thing to remember is that your guidelines should be nice and thin, as thin as you can. And it really doesn't matter how many you draw, it's what you darken at the end that you see. And it is a drink bottle. Give yourself an aiming mark at the top and two at the sides. That's going to allow us to draw in a peak of the roof, this could be your school building. Imagine if you got to design the paint scheme for your next repaint. How awesome would it look in candy colours? Using a square crate and a rectangle underneath, I can sketch in the rounded shapes of an insect. 
It's day four and we're stacking crates, people. Let's put those skills together. I've given you a box in the center to help start you off. Or if you're using scrap paper, that's fine. Sketch yourself uh, a box. Remember those guidelines are longer than we need them for the moment. Firm in your square in the center and then we're going to extend out this direction. Using your light guidelines, extend those out even further mark off what looks like a square and then sketch that in. Place a mark and then draw in one more square across. You think of these like building blocks. Let's go upwards. I'll extend my uh, guidelines, mark off what looks like the height of a square and draw in. Use your guidelines to help place the next square. We're left to draw just one on top and we should already have some guidelines. If not, extend them a little longer and sketch in a square. If you've managed to do that, awesome, well done. Imagine it's parkour and someone is tumbling and running up those stairs. Let's imagine it's something else. We'll build out the left. So just like before, we're extending our guidelines, marking off a square and firming in. We're making this object look symmetrical, the same on the left as we did on the right. Next, we're stacking downwards. I always use guidelines, but why don't you try drawing a few cubes without the guidelines and see how that works out. We could be drawing a machine part, maybe it's a brooch, even an earring. In this case, we're attaching a string and we're drawing a kite. The only thing it needs to be stable is a tail, so let's add that. You could draw a tail to your own design. Thanks for drawing along with me this week. I've really enjoyed it. Don't forget to practice at home and stay tuned for Friday Challenge. We have two options to choose from for this Friday's challenge and this is the Robot Assistant. Start with a horizontal line near the bottom of your page and then we're going to come upwards with some very light and thin guidelines. That'll save us erasing them later. From the second mark, Another line all the way up. Now we need to make a square. So choose where you need to place a mark and draw your line across. Great, so there's my first square. Don't darken in your drawing yet all the way around. We'll do that at the end. So come up uh, another square and then another mark for our third square. That's looking great. Near the bottom, I'm going to place a dot and imagine a circle around that dot. Now we'll firm that in. Another line on the inside makes it look like a wheel with a hub. I'm looking here at the very top block. I'm adding an aiming mark and I'm drawing two lines to the corners. Good, this is like a navigation sensor out the front even though it looks like a beak, and we have some optical sensors so it can see or sense where it's going. Place a mark in the center of this box, pop. Draw a line out to the left and turn it into a long rectangle. This will be my manipulator arm. It needs to be able to grasp objects and move them around. I'm making it a wing shape, but you could design your own shape. Let's add some design detail to the wheel. We'll start off with a hub, and some spokes. What will your first command to your robot assistant be? Hmm, it looks like you've asked it to get your iPad for you and it's bringing you what looks like a burger. Oh, good choice. And, and your headphones, good choice. Now it's time to um, darken in around the very outside of our objects. My design needs a hat. I think a gentleman's hat? No, chef's hat. Great. A little color can also help to show the separate parts. I hope you've enjoyed your challenge this week. I can't wait till next week when we have some more awesome drawing. Go practice. I'm Glennie D. Bye for now. <laughs>